Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a Pico HO scale sprinter set. And this is one of the uh, interesting releases from Pico. I'll put the number right there to let you see. It's item number 52096. And uh, it's a pretty cool set. This is in passenger service on the West Coast. And we're gonna get into the box next. Alright, so as you saw just a second ago, I lifted up the lid. Now, we open up the box. Go over some accessories here. Uh, there are some parts in the part bag here. And it looks like an extra uh, coupler to add, if you add um, cars to the set or something like that. So you see that. And it's going to be kind of winging this review because I couldn't find a whole lot of information on it online. I don't know if I'm not looking in the right place or what, but that is the uh, the set right there. I'm pretty sure there's some manuals down here below the styrofoam we can go over. And you got exploded parts manual. There's uh, sound functions for the commuter, commuter train. And both in English and uh, German, it looks like. Here is the set manual. Shows the inside, the DCC decoder installation. So I don't have to crack this bad boy open for you. And there's a little Pico HO booklet here talking about the Pico track and some uh, other items from Pico HO. And speaking of Pico track, that's what we're going to be using to go over this sprinter set with. As you can see in the background, that is Pico track. All right, we're just gonna do a pan down the side here. I'm not gonna point out much to you. I think there's some cab roof air conditioning, some other parts on the roof we'll take a look at, the doors and windows. There's an interior detail on this set. Luggage racks up top, it looks like. So I'm just gonna give you all angles instead of pretending to know what, this, uh, what all these parts and pieces are on this. I'll mention the obvious, but outside of that, it won't cover too much. There are crew figures installed, a headlight, windshield, and some other lights along with a, looks like a display of the city's their service. As you can see, a coupler mount there on the front, I think, to extend that out. Should be mirrored on the other side, it is. Uh, only difference I see on this side is a windshield wiper. You can see that right there on the front. Showing you the truck detail here and the diaphragm in between cars here. You can also see some of that interior detail a little better. Seating. You see a placard with a cities they service there on the side there's also fine print with handicap and other disclaimers and the wi-fi sign showing that there's wi-fi on board paints very vibrant on this looks really good you can even see some of the real fine detail here some of the labeling they really uh, seem to grasp all of that detail from the real thing Take a pan over the top there, you can see the safety striping on the cab AC unit, I believe that is. And then there's an exhaust of some type there. Another cab AC unit. You can see the little fan grate detail there as well. And more of the same on the other unit, going all the way to the end. 
All right, we're going to go over some functions of the sprinter set here, starting with five, which I believe turns the motor on and off. Now, even though you uh, get to hear this in Dolby Digital 5.1 surround, you'll probably notice it's pretty low volume. They're trying to be prototypical to the sounds, you know. Too loud on a model would be like a just ridiculously ear-piercing, earlobe, or eardrum bursting sound on a real thing with some of the model sounds here. So that's, so that's startup. Okay, so the motor is low sound also because it's in like residential area, so you don't want any uh, high sounding um, motors, you know, ruining the residential areas over there in California. But you'll notice with the crossing bell, it's pretty loud. It's to get everybody's attention to get off the track, stay out of the way, etc. So we'll listen to that, but I did want to mention it's loud in uh, kind of a perspective compared to the motor. And you'll notice the Sprinter's crossing bell actually sounds more like a crossing gate bell than a bell on your standard diesel locomotive. So that's F1. F2 is Longhorn. Now depending on which uh, DCC controller, you can either turn it on and it'll just keep blowing or you press it for its length. Mine, you have to hold it if you want it long. And F3 is the short horn. And I just press that real quick without holding it. And there's really no way to press that uh, long. Now, FRA emergency horn is F4. Has a higher pitch to get people's attention. Now, F. Nine is your grade crossing pattern. That's uh, two longs, a short and a long. We'll hit that real quick. That's pretty much standard across all railroads in the U.S. And what that does is the F9 will automatically play that for you so you don't have to play it out between F2 and F3. Okay, so we moved the locomotive a little bit to test brake squeal, which is F10, so I'll show you that real quick. <laughs> Hear the motor wind up a little bit, and brake squeal when you take the throttle back down to a lower speed step. So we'll change directions to get it back centered, let you hear brake squeal one more time. So there's brake squeal, sounds really good. Curve squeal, F11, I don't know that we'll be able to get that without curved track here set up. But it does have curve squeal, Vol volume controls F12, it's four different volumes you can get. Uh, high speed train warning is F13. So I'm not sure. May I have your attention please? Warning, some trains pass through this station at high speed. So it's kind of like passenger freight announcements you'd see on other models. This has specific ones on assigned the specific functions. Uh, F14, no smoking or alcohol, which is a good life lesson anyway. So as you can see it does that in English and Spanish. And there's see something on F15. Uh, 
As you can see, they're going to go ahead and do that in Spanish as well. So it's playing it in English, and then it's playing it in Spanish. There's several other of these. Uh, you know, I don't want to make the video super long, but there's Watch Your Step, Welcome Aboard, Ticket Seating, uh, Station Stops, Eastbound, 13 to 1 in sequence. So you can actually break down the station stops. We'll do that just to show you one of them. That was 17. 19 is supposed to be the station stops. Attention passengers, please watch your step while boarding the Sprinter. Once again, please watch your step while boarding the Sprinter. Thank you. Next stop, Crouch Street. There you go. So it's going to list all the streets and stops. I just did the first one, and if you keep doing it, it'll list more and more. Next stop, El Camino Real. And if you keep doing function 19 over and over again, it's going to go all the way down from station 13 to station 1 in sequence of those stations that the Sprinter services in California. It also will list the final stop on F20. So, and that's eastbound, and then F21 is 1 through 13 in sequence westbound, and then with the final stop of Oceanside. So that shows you how many different uh, stops there are, and, you know, you don't have to have the motor running either, and you can always tweak the sounds, but you can turn the motor off, for example, so you can hear one announcement that I haven't played yet, um, which is F16, doors opening and closing. That's really just a sound, not an announcement. But, and then there's also a welcome aboard on F-18. Welcome aboard the Sprinter. Passengers must have a valid ticket in their possession at all times. In the priority seating area behind the yellow line, you are required to move for seniors and persons with disabilities. So, that is uh, just kind of one of the announcements without the motor sound, so you can hear it a little better. But really packed decoder, 22 functions on this decoder, and just really well done with the, the sounds. And you can change the volume and stuff if you don't like it, which is good. So that's uh, just some of the functions. We'll go ahead and do some of the other tests. We're going to do a slow speed test on this. Even though it's a product demo, I do want to show you guys what kind of speed, slow speed operation you're getting on this. So one speed step there. Slowly moving through the AccuTrack speedometer here. And we should have a reading momentarily at 1 out of 128 speed steps. It's definitely smooth. There's no lurching or anything at that slow speed, which is great. Yeah, it's going 0.8 miles per hour, so uh, that's what the AccuTrack says. So it's really good accurate speed control at low speed steps, even less than a mile per hour in scale. Turn down the lights a little bit to show you when it's in one direction, the opposite direction has red marker lights. So that is shown here. Another lighting function, F6, turns on the interior lights, which are nicely done. I'll go ahead and turn this all the way down so you can see the interior lights completely. Also lets you see the interior detail a little better. Really nice interior detail on this model. I'll just pan and show you those a little more. And if you see that reflection at the bottom, it may look in your screen like it's coming from the bottom of the locomotive. That's not the case. It's shooting out the side onto my layout. And here's a look at the headlights. Um, again, depending on what direction you, you go to operate this in, it's going to change. And those would change to red marker lights if that was going in the opposite direction, which I just changed it. So you can see the headlights and the marker lights, those two ditch light areas, 
two lower lights are basically a dual function there where they can change from red to your standard white uh, LED. And speaking of which, it's got a good prototypical look to it. It looks like, uh, you know, what the real bulbs would look like on headlights. Well, that's going to wrap up our look at the Pico Sprinter. It's a really cool locomotive, available in stores now, online retailers, brick and mortar hobby shops. We didn't get to go very far with it because we just have a stretch of track here. But, um, you know, it's really a neat product. Uh, you can see here in the background, I'm working on lighting in the layout. So soon this layout will be, we'll have tracks so we can go a little further with this. But uh, as you can see here, there is a, you know, it increases the prime mover sounds a little bit when this moves along, but very smooth operating uh, passenger set here. And like I mentioned earlier in the review, you can uh, really accurately model Southern California passenger uh, rail operations with this uh, first release, first time release of this type of model, I believe. So really cool. Pico did an excellent job, sounds excellent, runs smooth, uh, looks very durable yet detailed. Those AC units on the roof are nicely detailed. You know, perfectly balanced model in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. With that said, thanks for watching guys. We will see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.